Down Friday Night is sponsored by these local businesses. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Touchdown Friday Night, one of the largest high school football shows in Tennessee, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Virginia. I'm Kenny Hawkins, flying so solo. I'll get it out here in a minute, tear off the back of my shirt. In the studio, because my tag team partner has been playing Speed Racer and working at the track, we'll join him a little bit later in the show, and he'll bring us up to speed on all the racing. But first, we get this party started with the Pisgah Roofing Top Tackle of the Night. Top Tackle of the Week is sponsored by Pisgah Roofing. And it comes from the Maribel and Science Hill game with topper linebacker Baylor Necessary. Becomes a brick wall against the Rebels running back. Pitcher perfect tackle once again. Baylor Necessary coming through the line. This would be a two-yard loss. That is our Pisgah Roofing Top Tackle of the Week. We'll start here in Johnson City where somebody's O had to go when state-ranked Maryville came into town to face the Science Hill Hilltoppers. Both teams were unbeaten and no team from this part of the state has beaten the Rebels in the last 41 tries. Maryville strikes first in the battle of unbeatens. Price Davis, Price is right. Gets the rock out in the flat and the screen makes the most of it. Maryville was on the board first in this contest. Science Hill, however, would answer a few plays later. A mistake from Maryville leads to McClee Anderson, interception, toppers with the momentum. Fast forward to the second half, toppers take the lead late in the fourth quarter on this field goal. The score is now 17-15 toppers. Toppers stop the Rebels, and they are driving. In a fourth and short situation, toppers elect to kick a field goal and go for it, but Baylor necessary is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Maribel gets the ball. No field goal, Maribel gets the ball. What do they do? They march right down the midfield. Price Davis punches it in with three seconds left on the clock. Maribel comes back to win by the final of 21 to 15. And some controversial stuff happening in there at the end and it hurt us. So uh, that, that's the difference in the game right there. So, you know, some bang bang stuff. We didn't get them. So, hey, that's how it happens. So once again, final score, Maryville wins with a couple of seconds on the clock over Science Hill by the final of 23-17. Greenville beating Morristown West tonight, 42-6. Let's get you up to Bristol where Tennessee High welcomes Sevier County to the Stone Castle. We pick it up on the first drive of the third quarter. Sophomore quarterback Cooper Newman uses play action to open up tight end Jackson Perry for the easy touchdown. Very next play, Vikings drive. Jackson Richardson looking downfield to his receiver. Wyatt Maples makes an incredible interception to give the Smokey Bears the ball back. Now late in the fourth, it's Newman ripping it. Newman ripping it up the seam to Perry again for another touchdown. Sevier County rolled in this one. They went on to win 49 to 20 on the road. They improved the 5 0 Tennessee High Falls to 1 and 3. Hancock County losing to North Green tonight 56 to 8. Elizabethan and Daniel Boone going head to head at ETSU. Not much going on for Boone in this one. The pass is incomplete on the fourth down attempt in the second quarter. Slow start for Betsy, but they get things going. Rhett Slagle finds Zach Wallen across the middle for a chuck of yards for the Cyclones as the drive into Boone territory. Then Slagle and Walling was working all night. The duo connects on an insane catch at the back of the end zone. Betsy on the board as time expires in the second quarter. It'd be the first of many Elizabeth and went on to win big tonight by the final of 42 to nothing. Other scores tonight. David Crockett going on the road. Big win for them, beating Cock County by the final 41-38. Coming at you from Carter County, the Hampton Bulldogs taking on the Cumberland Gap Panthers. And these boys look ready for the game. Bulldogs play quick with the handoff to Dom Burleson, who runs it in for a Hampton touchdown. Hampton continue to play sneaky, sending another handoff to Peyton Townsend, who carries it in for another Bulldogs touchdown. The Panthers try to hang in there with a pretty pass to Hunter Gibson, who shakes off the first tackle attempt but falls to a dog pile. Bulldogs miss, mixed it up. Maddox Wilson finds J.J. Cable with a pass all the way down the field for another Hampton touchdown. And the Bulldogs rolling tonight. They went on to win by the final of 60-4. to Other scores, Cherokee beating Northview Academy by the final of 28-21. Now we head just down the road to see the Jellicoe Blue Devils taking on the Unaka Rangers at home. Owen Morgan takes charge for Jellicoe as he runs from the 50-yard line, shakes off a hard tackle, runs around the defense, goes all the way. <sighs> Man, I'm tired. 
all the way around to the other side for the Bulldogs. He gets into the touchdown, raising the score to 22 to 8. He ran 200 yards for a 50 yard touchdown. Seems like both teams love the run because Connor McKinney looked for an open man, saw nothing, went on his own journey. Okay, you got to wear me out. Everywhere in the defense, he zipped right past him for a Unica touchdown, trimming the lead at 24-14. Morgan once again making another run for Jellico, cuts around the defense, dodges the defender, but is taken down just short of the goal line. Maybe if he would have run around in circles, he would have got on the board. As we go to the scoreboard, looks like this. A lot of scoring in this contest, but it was Jellico beating Unica 42-24. Happy Valley over Eagleton Academy 27 to 13. The Blue Devils looking to stay unbeaten as they had a road trip to West Green this evening. We kicked things off early in the first quarter. The Buffaloes marching down the field to set up a run by Tristan Banks to put West Green up early. And this was 6-0 after the failed PAT. The Blue Devils, however, looking to get that high-powered offense going early. After a few incompletions, the Blue Devils decided to keep it on the ground. Branson Salt, no pepper here, but put Unicoi into the red zone. Next play, the talented junior quarterback, Kobe Jones. Kobe found his groove connected with Coda Cutlet for the touchdown. Unica or Unicoi County would make the extra point. Unicoi up 7-6. After a few possessions where neither team could score, Buffalo's quarterback was looking for a receiver downfield. Picked off by the Blue Devils, Garrett Sellers, and he would find a hole and take it down the field for the touchdown. Unicoi County up 14-6 as we go to the board. Looks like this. That final tonight, it was Unicoi County winning 47-18. Johnson County continues to win. They won 49-32. We've just scratched the surface. When we come back, we'll finish off the games in Northeast Tennessee before making a run for the border. But first, here are the Unica Rangers. They'll take us to break. Let's go, Rangers! Get side! 